so good afternoon everyone my name is Priscilla Lugin and I would like to talk to you today about recovering uh, from a knowledge catastrophe at the Museu Nacional do Rio de Janeiro. Just to let you know uh, I don't speak on behalf of the Museu Nacional my view is based on my research as a Brazilian archaeologist and well, as I was getting settled in Barcelona on the 2nd of September just before the EAA I got the news that the National Museum was on fire. The blaze had started around 7.30 p.m., apparently due to an electrical problem. The historical building, once home to the Portuguese royal family and approximately 20 million artifacts, was burning. The disaster followed years of underfunding and reflects a broader neglect of cultural heritage in Brazil. The Piranga Museum closed since 2013, a, fly, a fire closed the Museu da Língua Portuguesa in 2015, and a Museu do Índio of Indigenous People closed to the public since 2016. The destruction of cultural heritage at the museum caused a deep trauma. A vitally important knowledge base was gone, the work of the past and present researchers. Furthermore, it impacted visitors, around 46% of whom of low income, as well as indigenous communities, who already lost so much, now lost many items that we never managed to identify. Faced with the destruction of our most important knowledge repositories, the museum and the anthropological library, I look at how we recover and how knowledge mapping might contribute to the future resilience. The museum team initiated a detailed excavation of the whole site run by archaeologists themselves, sieving and processing all the remains from the store rooms and display spaces. Nothing leaves the site without being checked. Beyond the excavation, there were other recovery reports immediately after fire. Previously, rather reserved on social media, the Museu Nacional began Museu Nacional Video Campaign online. Those who found fragments of documents and artifacts across the neighborhood were encouraged to bring them in, and our email address was set up to receive digital copies, and volunteers and donations were requested. Furthermore, the Anthropology Library requested a list of more than 23,000 books. The change in approach in social media engagement provoked an impassionate response from the young people of Brazil who sent letters and built replicas of artifacts. One pop machine replica of the throne of Zadan, produced by a 13 years old, was even included in the Museu Nacional Viv exhibition. Others reacted online themselves before the fire was even out and beyond the official outreach of digital orthodoxy. The students at Unihil had the idea of crowdsourcing inmates to receive emails and receive more than 5,000 in just a few hours. In parallel, Wikimedia called on users to upload Wikimedia Commons. A collection of models associated with the museum was even created on Sketchfab. The Digital Academy was involved somewhat. Google Arts and Culture quickly released the data that they had gathered in 2016 in a virtual exhibit. Amazing work was ongoing in the recovery excavations and even provide material for exhibitions already to exhibitions. But what were the outcomes of the different approaches? The only here students requested photos. I still waited for their response. The museum even requested that the photos and submission of data only be directed to them. So it was the become, become the students' research led is unclear. The efforts are also revealed the lack of prioritization of digitization. For example, of the example is the Egyptian mummies rather than any other remains like the Zia that was only partially scanned and a copy made of her physical facial reconstruction construction by chance. Furthermore, in many in Brazil still don't have a clear mitigation for st such risks. We now require much more effective planning and this is where our knowledge map could be used to be understand the areas at, his, at risk. As we rebuild the knowledge base, I believe that the knowledge map will use bibliometric studies of foundation as Alain Sinclair in 2016, who defined open research uh, fronts and core research in archaeology using citation networks. Then, if, we should, if there should be no limitations to what is deemed to be remarkable, the approach can be extended to multiple forms of digital data, which will depend on open data, taking on more of the form uh, trappings of publication as per Artsy et al. 2012. Ideally, slow data data sets and very effective archaeology would be prioritized, supported by a broad base of more unrefined data where AI ML could help us to map information across the semantic web. However, this open 
uh, open, this openness raise other issues beyond, beyond even data quality, traceability and reusability. This was not by Beaven, who stated that a more pernicious, pernicious feature of digital archaeology, archaeological information, is the risk that we will make that we will make us less, not more equal. Such inequality already exists in our global society due to the deeper issues. We even see the discussions on Twitter, lack of representation of the global south at this very CAA. Those facts play out in the fears of many researchers in the developed world and not encouraging openness with the data. To belay these fears, we will require incentives and reformulation of the value chain to encourage them to their open data, to, to open data and contribute to the knowledge map. Thank you.